Hey there, my name is Peter Sweeney and I'm a materials and environment artist. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Sloyd's AI-driven text-to-3D tools alongside Substance Painter to rapidly create game-ready assets. Feel free to follow along and let me see your creations in the comments. Alrighty, so let's get right into it. Here we are in the Sloyd program and we're going to start by creating our model. So I'm just typing in my prompt here, an old tractor with big wheels, and we will hit submit and let it spit out our model. Looks pretty good. We've got all the main features here. Now we can go in and start doing a little customizing. Um, liking the small angled front and the hood scoop. Try out the exhaust on the right side. Yeah, those those wheels look better with the with the off-road tires. And then I'm gonna go in and start making some adjustments to the wackiness features of it. Trying to make it a little more stylized. Um, give it that shorter top forward tilt to it. Check out the details panel. Last thing I'm gonna do, I checked out the curved front. I didn't, don't think I loved it, um, but I actually wanted to go for an open cab uh, with the steering wheel option there. And uh, yeah, this looks like a, a really good start. I'm going to take a quick look at all the material options, but in general, I like the green and gray the most. So I think we are ready to export and I'm gonna bring that over into Substance so we can start painting. All right, so here we are in Substance and with our imported model, you can see it didn't come with any textures or anything. So first things first, we gotta bake our mesh maps and I'm gonna do an output size of 1024 and make sure to use the low poly as the high poly. Um, this will just give us some ambient occlusion and some uh, world space normals and then we can also use all of that when using smart materials and smart masks. So the first thing I'm going to do is lay down a steel scratched material. Um, use this as the base to the tractor texture. I think it gives it a nice worn metal look. Um, just gonna go in and decrease some of this sharpen intensity so that the edges don't pop as much. And then just adjust that roughness a slight bit to make it look a little, a little less new, uh, a little duller. Then I'm gonna go start working on the paint on the tractor to begin with. Uh, I liked the green that we had on Sloyd, so I'm gonna continue that. Um, I think it's, it's gonna pop really well with that metal underneath and give it just kind of that classic tractor look to it. What I'm doing here is using a basic fill layer um, adjusting the color, roughness, metal to get it to a level that I like. And then I'm going to bring in this paint chipped smart mask. And that will allow me to adjust the um, level of scratches and wear on the tractor all procedurally so that I can very quickly change how worn it looks just messing with the ambient occlusion and the balances of the two textures until I get to a point that I think looks pretty good. I think that's about, about good. Now I'm going to bring in a um, additional fill layer and Oops, I put that on the wrong slide. I put that on the mask, but I'm gonna bring in a fill layer 
on the uh, base color itself and apply a grunge paint uh, chipped and then I'm going to use a overlay and bring that way down so I get some variation in color on here. And after I adjust the tiling, you should be able to see some slight variation in the chips and painting almost like this was uh, hand painted and has some variation going on. Now I'm gonna bring in two other paint fill layers that I had done before this um, using the same method to get this yellow paint on the hood and the black paint on this seat of the tractor. Bringing that into the scratch steel folder I get some of that dirt and dust on top and then I'm going to add on these rubber tires which is just the generic rubber raw material. Um, but I placed it using a mask so it only appears on the tires. Now here we're going to start working on the treads of the tire. Uh, this is something I thought could be done fairly easy in Painter and you wouldn't need to add more geometry. Um, so we're going to start with a dark brown mud color and bring the height down a bit and then add a black mask to it. And then we're going to go into that mask and add a fill layer with this gradient 3 pattern on top of it. Um, it won't look like much right away, but then when we up the tiling, you can see how it's affecting the model. Um, and it's going to look like we're going to need more, but to start, we're going to switch it over to a cylinder so that we can have it um, projecting around the tires on their circumference so that we can see these treads moving around the base. And that looks pretty good. Uh, feel free to play around with the pattern you use and the balance and rotation and all that to get a tread that uh, seems like it works for you. But I think that's a pretty good start for me. And now I just got to work on masking these away. All right, for the sake of time, I uh, just copied over the mask that I created before I started the video, and I'm just going to paste that into my treads mask, and that will leave me with just the tread showing up around the tires where I wanted them to. Now I will start working on the hubcaps. I thought a uh, nice bright red paint on the hubcap would look nice, um, to which I added a grunge scratches to, to just add a little bit of wear to it. Um, nothing too crazy. And then brought in a black fill layer with a lowered height to um, build out some of these seams and um, screw holes throughout the metal. So now we can start adding a little bit more character and by bringing in a machinery smart material we're gonna get a bunch of rust and grime and dirt so we can throw that on and then get rid of the metal base because we already have the metal and rubber base of our tractor. And first we're gonna take a look at the dirt it just does a subtle layer of speckles all across, which I like. And then we're going to take a look at the dust. This is just a nice layer of grime on top of the tractor, which I like, but I want to see if I can get a little bit more out of it. That might be a little bit too much, so I'm going to bring it down just a bit. Um, but I think that's a good starting point for the dirt. Um, and then we're going to go dive into the rust material, which this is way too much. It, it almost looks like mud splatter right now, so I'm going to change it to a little bit of a brighter orange. Um, give it that variation a little bit and kind of uh, make it pop some more. And then I'm going to go start working on the mask. Um, so 
we'll start with just uh, decreasing the balance and contrast globally and that will give us more defined shape and um, you know just a little bit less all around and then I'll go tweak in the ambient inclusion and then the balance on the two other textures until I find a look that seems to fit what I'm going for. And I think that looks pretty good, but I want to start with some edge wear on the fenders and corners, so I'm going to add a generator to this mask and look up metal edge wear. And you can see it's pretty subtle to start. So I'm going to go in and adjust the wear level and contrast until I get to a point where I think it's a little bit more noticeable, but not overkill. And then I'm going to come in and change that grunge amount as well, um, getting it to a level that looks natural. Be a little too much, back it down just a bit. And yeah, that looks looks pretty good. And now to get this generator to work with the other mask we have. I just need to go in and change it to a linear add um, and that way uh, these masks are working together and with that it looks pretty solid. Now the last thing I'm noticing is that this mask is uh, showing up on the entire tractor but I don't want the rust appearing on the tires themselves so I'm going to go in with the geometry mask and take it off the tires. There seems to be a little bit left on the um, slats on the tires, but I think that'll be all right because it's going to get covered up when I start adding some mud later on. Um, so now we're going to add a paint layer to this rust fill. And I went with a bright orange and the Dirt 2 brush so that I can get sort of a um, brighter pop to this rust. And if you have a tablet, this would be a great time to use it. But if not, you can totally use your mouse and keyboard and um, still get that effect. You just want to make sure that your settings are what you want. And if you don't know, you can play around with them and make sure that the flow and the spacing is what you want. But I'm just going to go in and draw on some bright spots here and there. I turned off symmetry so that I can really focus on where it looks natural. Um, and I'm just going down and putting on sort of a heavy coat on a lot of these spots. And then I'm going to go back with the eraser and maybe pick Dirt 3 and uh, go in and take back some of that. Um, so you just get spots of this bright orange with um, little speckles on it and it it doesn't feel like a overkill slap in the face with that orange. So switching over to the other side and just going to repeat the process. And you can spend as much time or as little as you want on this. This is the the part where you can add some more character to it. Um, the generators are great on speeding through this process and getting it to a workable point very quickly, um, but then going back in with uh, the brush and the eraser and adding details like this will really add a lot of character to your prop. All right, I think that's to a pretty good spot. Move the light around, just make sure it's looking good. And yeah, I am happy with that. All right, next thing I'm gonna get started on is adding some dirt. Since this looks like it's been sitting out for a while, I want it to be nice and muddy looking. Um, so I'm gonna start with just a generic fill layer. I'm going to add on to it a metal and a roughness so I can make sure that it appears 
as flat as possible. Um, and yeah, that's a muddy looking tractor. Time to start masking away some clean bits. All right, I'm gonna start with the Ground Dirt Smart Mask and add that onto my fill later. And that's gonna give us a good gradient of dirt coming up the sides and the back and front of the tractor. Um, I'm gonna go in and change the balance and contrast just a bit. Get it to a point that feels natural, but I do want this dirt you know, covering most of the bottom of it. So I'm gonna go in and adjust the AO and get it to a point that feels good. That looks like a good start, um, but I'm gonna add another generator to this. And so I'm gonna search up dirt that's gonna give me a lot of dirt around the body, which was good. The ground dirt wasn't covering much of that, but I think it might be a little bit overkill. Um, so I'm gonna bring down that dirt level and uh, bring down that contrast so we get a nice gradient. But I like how it's adding it to these wheel wells and to the base and seat. Um, so that's starting to look good. And again, like the other masks, I'm gonna have to go in and make sure that I am uh, using the correct mixing mode so that this cooperates with the other masks I have built onto this. It's pretty good. I might try a add. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think we'll stick with the linear add. Um, and then, just to add a little bit more variation, I'm gonna go in and add a fill later to the base color and add a Dirt 4 on that. And then same as when I was working on the paint, I'm gonna add, change the mixing mode and I'll just do a subtract, get those dark spots and I'm gonna bring it down so it's a little more subtle but just gives us a little bit more variation on there. And that's starting to look good. Tweak it just a little bit with the tiling. And there we go. And there we go. That is one dirty, dusty, rusty tractor. Now I am just going to take it over to Marmoset and do a quick render so we can see how it all looks. And here we have it. In less than 20 minutes, we went from nothing to a game-ready asset with a lot of history and character. I hope y'all learned something in this video and can see the power of these tools. I'd love to see what folks create, so make sure to leave a comment. And follow Sloyd for more AI-driven 3D updates. Thanks, and have a great day.